Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to take a look at how we can use the tree diagram to help us solve a problem involving probability. Now in the previous video we learned about the area model, and the area model and the tree diagram, they're just two different methods to help us solve a problem with probability. And really there's a time and a place for both. Sometimes the area model will be a little easier for us to set up, but sometimes the tree diagram will be easier for us to set up. So it's just up to us to figure out which method is best for the problem that we're looking at. But for right now, we're just gonna look at how to introduce this tree diagram to you guys and to understand how we set it up and use it. Now just remember, for probability, it just gets boiled down to a single sentence. That sentence is, how likely something will happen. Remember, for these problems, we're not 100% certain that this thing is going to occur, but we're just looking at an event and trying to figure out what's the chance of this thing happening. So let's go ahead and look at an example problem that I have set up for us. And that example problem is right there and it's talking about a game we're gonna play. The game says, pick a marble. In order to win this game, you will reach into two bags and pick out a marble in each bag. If the marbles match in color, you win. Now let's say bag number one has three yellow marbles, one blue, and two red. And bag number two is gonna have one yellow marble and two reds. And we wanna find out what's the probability that you will win. So what we're gonna use for this case is what we call a tree diagram. And we have to first identify what's going on in this problem. Now I see two different events occurring. Remember with probability, we're trying to identify what action is taking place, what's the event. And I see here that the events, actually the events for this example, is you are reaching into bag number one, and you're reaching into bag number two. And so those are the two different events that you're, or that's happening with this problem. And that's what we need to demonstrate and show on our tree diagram. So to set up our tree diagram, let me zoom this out a little bit. We always wanna start off with a starting point. That starting point is just a dot there that kind of gets us started for this problem. Now we have to now think about our first event. I'm gonna go ahead and just label that first event over here with a number one. The first event that we have is that we have bag number one, you're reaching in, you're pulling out a marble, and we wanna talk about all of the possible outcomes for event number one, or for bag number one. Well, over here I see that we have three possible outcomes. You're either gonna pull out a yellow marble, a blue marble, or a red marble. So from this starting point here, I need to show that. I need to show that there are going to be three distinct different outcomes from bag number one. You're either going to get a yellow marble or you're going to get a blue marble or you're picking out a red marble. That right there is showing us that for bag number one, that first event, there are three separate outcomes. Now let's talk about bag number two. And if we're looking over here at bag number two, now we have to think about what are the outcomes for reaching into bag number two. And I think for bag number two, we only have two different outcomes. The first is either you pull out a yellow marble, the second option is that you pull out a red marble. So we have two different outcomes for bag number two, which means that, for example, if I happen to pick this yellow marble first, when I'm reaching into bag number two, we're going to have two separate outcomes stemming or branching off of that yellow choice. And those two options there are either another yellow marble or a red marble. Now this action here of picking bag number two with those two outcomes, that's also gonna occur down here when we pick a blue marble or down here when we pick a red marble. So what we're actually going to do is we're gonna copy what we just did there. We're gonna show those two branches coming off for both of those two other options 
Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see that clearly. And for this, we're gonna just copy what we did. Either you're picking a yellow or a red, picking a yellow or a red. Now that is our tree diagram. We are almost done setting it up, but that really is the shape and the form for a tree diagram. And we call it a tree diagram because of all of these different branches that we see coming off of each event. Okay, each event leads you down a different path and it's just you figuring out now what those probabilities are. Now, as it stands, this diagram is a bit misleading. Looking at the first bag here, it looks like choosing a yellow marble or a blue marble or a red marble. They look like they have an equal chance of occurring, but we know that's not the case. We know that there are different amounts of each colored marble in bag number one. And so we need to first identify that on this tree diagram. So looking at bag number one, I see that there are three yellow marbles. There are three yellow marbles out of a total of six marbles in that bag. So for bag number one, the chance of you pulling out a yellow marble is going to be three out of six. So on my tree diagram here for yellow, I'm going to add on this branch a fraction showing that the yellow marble actually has a three in six chance. Same thing with the blue. The blue marble has a one in six chance and the red marble in bag number one has a two in six chance. Now looking at this tree diagram, this first bag is no longer misleading. It clearly tells you what the chance of each marble is and it no longer looks like each one is equally likely to happen. Now we just need to do the same thing for bag number two. And for bag number two, I think we had a total of three marbles there. One was yellow, two were red. So for yellow on here, I'm gonna show that this is a one in three chance. Red had a two in three chance. And I need to copy that down all the way for these other branches to show that fraction. And there we go. We now have our complete tree diagram and we can clearly see all of the different options and all of the different fractions that go along with each color. Now our question was, what's the probability, let's not forget that, what's the probability that you win? And remember, you win when the two marbles you pick match in color. So what we have to now decide is, or figure out, is looking at this tree diagram, how many ways do you have to match marbles? So let's say we journey down this first branch and we end up with a yellow marble out of the first bag. The only way to win now would be to go and pick that second yellow marble out of the second bag. And so what this is showing you is the path for you to win because you have a yellow marble and another yellow marble. Going down here and picking the red marble would not let you win. Now let's go ahead and journey down this blue path. If you, as you see, as we come down the blue path here, if we pick a blue marble out of the first bag, the second bag does not have a blue marble. It's actually impossible for you to win if you pull that blue marble out first. So I'm not gonna leave that highlighted because there's no path to winning if you pick that blue marble first. Now down here, if you go down and you pick first a red marble, you do have a chance to pick down another red marble. And we see that there by that blue highlighted branches. What we now need to do is we just need to identify the probability of those two events happening. And to do that, all we have to do is look at those fractions that we have. We have three sixths, we have one third. We just need to take those two fractions there and multiply them very similarly to how we did that in the area model. And we'll know what was the probability of us pulling two yellows. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that three over six. I'm going to multiply it by that one over three. 
Remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across on the numerator, straight across on the denominator. Three times one becomes a three. Six times three becomes an 18. Now, if I wanted to, I could simplify that, but I think I'm gonna hold off for the moment only because I think it'll help us if this denominator stays 18, because when we look at our other one, I think it also might end up as 18. So looking down here, I see that to get this red, it was two out of six. Multiplying the other chance of getting this red, which is two out of three. Again, we're gonna multiply straight across. Two times two will give me four. Six times three will give me 18. So those are the two probabilities showing you winning by pulling two yellow marbles out or by you to pulling two red marbles out. Now that we have those two fractions, all we have to do is write those out. Three over 18, four over 18, and we just need to add them together. Remember when you add fractions, you don't add the denominators. The denominators do need to be the same number. In this case, they are both 18, which means that they will become a single fraction with 18 on the bottom. Three plus four on the top becomes seven. So the chance of you winning this game is seven out of 18, a little less than 50%. But that's how you set up the tree diagram. The tree diagram is a nice visual way of seeing all of the different possibilities when you're having two events happening. And it really helps us to see which paths will lead to the event that you want to occur. In this case, we wanted to see what was the chance of you winning. We see that that was seven out of 18. Now you could also solve this problem with an area model. And like I said, both methods work. It's just sometimes one is more beneficial than the other. All right, guys, it's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.